the one who came on a rescue mission, the one who rescued us through self-sacrifice, finally, the one to follow. In the first half of our passage, we're standing still and listening to uh, and watching John the Baptist. But in the second half of our passage, we're going to go on a journey. Uh, the speed of the action picks up and we're watching a chain of re a chain reaction, a chain of events. We start with John again, but he's pointing to Jesus. Uh, he, he's pointing to Jesus and, and told his disciples uh, who've been following John around uh, that Jesus is the Lamb of God. And they can't help but stop following John and start following Jesus instead. Uh, one of them was Andrew. And verse 41, the first thing that so he did was go and find his brother, Simon, Simon Peter, and told him that he'd found the Messiah, the chosen one. He'd found the one who'd been promised and he brought Simon to Jesus. The next day, Jesus finds Philip, verse 45. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. You can imagine him in a rather pompous voice, can't you? Philip found the one who Moses wrote about, the great prophet who was to come. You see, the Old Testament people thought Moses was the great prophet, but Moses said, no, there's going to be one far greater than me coming. And, and uh, here, Philip has found him. But there was a problem for Nathaniel. You see, Jesus was from Nazareth. Nazareth? That was the back of beyond, where nothing significant came from. A bit like, well, what in the Second World War was, was called a town on the northeast coast. A, a completely unexpected place for great things to come from. Of course, we know, don't we, that Hull is full of loads of good things and loads of good people have come from here. I, well, there's a chip spice. Let's start there, shall we? You can only get better. Uh, the Beautiful South, Philip Larkin, Maureen Lippman, loads more. And of course, William Wilberforce. Great things can come from uh, towns, cities that are, are far away from elsewhere, can't they? But we don't have a candle to hold against Nazareth. However unexpected it might have been, that's where Jesus was brought up. You see, the Chosen One, the Messiah was not as you would have expected him. If you'd been uh, one of those uh, Jewish leaders, one of those religious leaders from the first century, you were looking for somebody who, who looked majestic, who looked kingly, who was going to ride into town and kick the Romans out and give you your country back again. But Jesus wasn't like that. However, he was somehow magnetic. Impossible not to follow if, if he called you. Why? Well, there was that state of a uh, that start of a thread in John's gospel it introduced last week that we skipped over a bit. Verse 14 said this. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. You see, when Jesus calls you, you get a glimpse of his glory, of his character, of the wonderful things that he, he's done. Fully revealed, his, his glory is fully revealed at the cross where the Lamb of God died and took away the sin of the world. But here, the first disciples are just beginning to see his glory as he calls them and they can do nothing then follow him. Uh, we'll see loads more about what it means to follow Jesus as we work through the gospel. But two things to notice here. Firstly, when Jesus calls, those who will be his disciples, his followers, will follow him. You simply can't help but be drawn to him, even today. It might be that you're someone who's been sitting on the edge of Christian things for a while. And you can feel Jesus drawing you in. Can you see that's the normal experience of people who, who come into his orbit? You just can't help 
but be drawn to him, can ye? Will ye copy Andrew and Simon Peter and Philip and Nathaniel, and will ye follow him? Uh, the second thing to spot is that those who follow Jesus tell others about Jesus. Well, you would, wouldn't you? If, if you know that he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, if, if you know that he's the promised one of the Old Testament uh, that, that it's been looking forward to for millennia, if, if you know that he's the one who baptises in the Holy Spirit and gives eternal life, and also if you know the last thing that our passage today says about Jesus, look with me at verse 50. Jesus said to Nathanael, you will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Uh, that's a reference to another Old Testament incident. Jacob, one of the uh, fathers of the nation, uh, had a dream in which there were angels going up and down the staircase between earth and heaven with God at the top. And in Jacob's dream, God promised him that through one of his descendants, the whole world would be blessed. And here is Jesus claiming to be the one who brings that blessing. Uh, Jesus is claiming to be none other than the way to heaven. And so anyone who comes to Jesus and follows him has had the way to heaven opened for them. Come and see, said Philip. If you know Jesus, will you invite others to come and see? Uh, will you invite others to find out for themselves who Jesus is and what he has to offer? Payment for sin, eternal life, a, a way to heaven. Maybe you could uh, offer to, to read through John's Gospel with, with somebody who's exploring Jesus at the moment. It'd be a great thing to do, wouldn't it? To, to let Jesus speak for himself through the words of John's Gospel. To let that person see Jesus for themselves and see if he draws them to himself. Why, why not think about doing that with somebody? Read John's Gospel with them. If you need some resources for, for that, do get in touch with the church office and, and we can help you out. So as we close, Jesus is the one, isn't he? He's the one who came on a rescue mission to rescue all who will turn to him. He's the one who is the Lamb of God who rescues us from sin and from death and from judgment. He, he's the one upon whom the Holy Spirit rests and uh, who baptises in the Holy Spirit, giving eternal life to anyone who follows him. And he's the one who is the way to heaven, who's opened the gate of heaven for all who trust in him. And he's the one to tell other people about. Shall I pray for us? Our Father, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he's done all of those wonderful things for us. And we pray that we would be thankful from the bottom of our hearts for all that he is and he's done. Please would we see his glory through your words as we dwell on who Jesus is. In his name we pray. Amen.